We're going to be learning about Flux and Faraday's Law. I put this really naughty t-shirt, actually. <laughs> what the Flux? That's actually a joke on, uh, if you've ever seen the old uh, movies, Back to the Future. There you go. It's related to that. At least it's called the Flux Capacitor. But there we go. We're going to talk about, actually, magnetic flux. And it's a weird thing, uh, because magnetic flux itself isn't really so important, but it's what we do with it that's going to be important. So, yeah, it's relating to how magnetic field lines are intersecting a surface area. But um, I'm just going to first define this letter. So first, first of all, we use this Greek letter phi for magnetic flux. Okay, that's what we're going to be looking at. And what we do is we have this area A. So let's just say I have this like, you know, square right here with this, this area. And what happens is this, this magnetic field line, in this case, this B magnetic field line here, has it, as it's crossing this area, well, it maybe has an angle to the normal here, this angle theta here to the normal. Notice it is not the angle from the surface. It's from the normal. This is super, super important, okay? So really, really important. We're going to have this equation that goes like this. And this is in your data booklet. It goes phi equals B A times cosine of theta. So where this theta is this angle from the normal. And where we're going to have the magnetic field strength is B that's measured in Teslas. A is the area measured in meters squared. And theta is this angle in degrees between B and the normal to A. So that's really, really important. Okay, so let's do Faraday's law itself. So first of all, I just want you to know this right here is the definition. This is super important, and it's actually one of the nerdiest sounding sentences, isn't it? The induced EMF is proportional to the rate of change of magnetic flux linkage. What? Well, let's first of all break this down. We've actually got an equation for it on your data booklet. So it goes EMF, that's this epsilon here. It's induced EMF. And remember, that's just a voltage. So that's, uh, at least that's the slang for it. We do say it's, you know, it's an electromotive force, but we, it is in volts. And that thing is equal to, let's see, if it says it's proportional to, that means it must be equal to some constant. Now it turns out it's a minus and an n, where n is the number of turns in your coil. So if you have a coil that spins around or wraps around something twice, then n is 2. If it wraps around 10 times, n is 10. And then we say the rate of change of magnetic flux linkage. What does that mean? A rate of change is uh, delta something over time. So it's going to be delta phi over time. So this is our equation in our data booklet. Okay, so what does it mean then? Is that as this uh, magnetic field, so remember we were just learning about in um, the last slide I showed you, when we're talking about magnetic flux, is that magnetic flux linkage is how it's actually crossing a surface. And if that magnetic field, you know, uh, crossing the surface is changing, that's when you have a delta phi delta t here. So as long as it's changing. So a practical thing is that uh, you need to have moving magnetic field lines. Those are what are going to induce an EMF or a voltage. But they have to be moving. So for example, if I have this little, this is called an electromagnet, because it's a little piece of metal. And if you wrap some coil of uh, wire around it, and let's assume this here is a lamp. So it's just like a light bulb. So there's no actual battery here. So if you leave it by itself, nothing's happening. But now what do you do? You take this magnet here and this magnet has a magnetic field around it i mean i can maybe draw it, it goes like this here it goes away from the north and towards the south maybe i'll draw that one too going down like this i mean it's gonna have lots but you know this is at least a version here so what if i take this thing now what do i do i take it and i bring it towards this thing if i just have it like this and it's sitting still are there going to be some of these lines, like some of these uh, green lines? Remember, you have to imagine lots of green lines going around this. They go further and further out. It's not just one, okay? There's lots of them. But can you imagine then if I'm just sitting here, but I'm still? Well, there is flux linkage. In other words, there's a place where these field lines are crossing this uh, electromagnet, but they're not changing with time. Do you notice that? So uh, if they're not changing with time, then there's going to be no uh, EMF. But if they're changing, in other words, if it's moving, ah, as long as I'm moving, then it's going to be inducing an EMF. There's going to be some kind of um, voltage induced. So that's the key thing here. It's got to be moving. If it's just staying still, nothing. 
And what's interesting about it is that, well, a nice exam tip is that if it's faster moving, there's a larger EMF. So what does that mean? Well, that means like, let's say I said, uh, I don't know, um, three times delta phi delta t. In other words, maybe this thing moves even faster. Maybe it moves three times as fast. Well, because it's directly proportional, that'll be three times the EMF. So in other words, if it was inducing, let's say three volts, and you move it twice as fast, well, the, or sorry, three times as fast, then three times three will be nine. So now it'll be nine times, uh, nine volts. And more coils as well is the same idea. So let's say I had, I don't know, let's say I had um, n times uh, 5. Well, what will that lead to? In other words, I have 5 times more coils. What does that do? That takes your EMF and multiplies that by 5. So just so you know, it's directly proportional. So these changes are important. Now, I think it might be a nice idea to look at an animation that I like from PHET, good old them, and it's uh, Faraday's Electromagnetic Lab. I decided not to show you the um, electrons because that will confuse you because we're not using electron flow current in the IB, we use conventional current. But this is what's going to happen here. So I've got this magnet here, and it's drawing basically these magnetic field lines. You can see that's the little mini compasses everywhere. And this is just my lamp. Notice there is magnetic flux linkage. There are field lines that are crossing this thing. So there is flux linkage right now, but it's not changing with time. What do I have to do instead? I have to move it. So what if I move it? As I'm passing it through, for example, as I'm moving it, do you notice then the light bulb shines? And it's only shining as I'm moving. And the faster I move it, you know, the more the light bulb shines. If I move it just a little bit, it shines only a little bit. But it's only lighting up the light bulb when I'm moving. There has to be movement. Now we have an equation for if there is a wire that's moving in a magnetic field, and it goes like this. The induced EMF is going to be just B V L. That's our equation. Okay, so E, this epsilon, that's the induced EMF, that's in volts. B is the magnetic field strength in Teslas. Uh, v, this lowercase v, that's just the speed of the wire, and L is the length of the wire, and that's it. So a nice simple example of this would be, well, you have a plane and it's flying with a speed of 200 meters per second. And let's say it has a wingspan of 30 meters. And we're told the Earth's magnetic field strength is 10 to the minus 5 Teslas. That's actually what it is. It's very, very small. Well, uh, how's this? it's because one Tesla is a really big number. But uh, what's the maximum potential difference it can generate across its wings? In other words, this right here is going to be our induced EMF. And it's really, really simple. All you have to do is just get this equation of B. V, L. You just put those in because your maximum potential difference will be your EMF. So let's see. We'll just put in our numbers and that's it. So I'll put in uh, B, which is uh, 10 to the minus 5. Okay, I put in my V, which is 200. And I put in my length, which is 30. Actually, I could probably do this without a calculator. Let's see. So this right here will be 10 to the minus 5 times, let's see, 200 times 30. Well, 2 times 3 is 6. Add three zeros. That makes it 6,000. And 10 to the minus 5, what happens then if I multiply those two numbers? That's like taking this right here. I have to move my decimal over by 5. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. That will give me 0 0.06 volts. And that's it. So that's the maximum potential difference that I can generate across. It's actually really nice and easy. Nothing to it.